guys, so last week I talked about the siphon, which uses the cloth filter that I had spent countless hours perfecting. But this week, I wanted to show everybody the pour over device that is the closest to the siphon because it also uses a cloth filter. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. And if you love experimental and educational videos, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get the first and quickest updates on the newest techniques and the newest ideas. So if you haven't guessed exactly what the dripper is, it is the Nell Drip. Now the Nell Drip is actually the last three letters of the word flannel. N-E-L, so Nell Drip. Um, that's why it is actually just a thick cloth kind of a filter, which, yeah, makes sense. Normally though, this actually comes with a glass craft that I broke recently, so won't be showing you guys today, but I've actually never used it myself. I actually always just hold this over my cup and I just watch it drip and it is just such a fun thing to do and it is possibly the only pour over device that is the closest to the siphon. So I wanted to talk about the cloth a little bit more since the whole device actually revolves entirely around this thing. Now, in my opinion, I think Harvey could have made a little bit of a better adjustment. Um, they actually just stitched it together as you guys can see over here. And the stitching just creates this thick, kind of triangular shape at the bottom. If it was left to me, I would have preferred if it was completely just like a sock and it was just kind of sagging. But let's talk a little bit about the filter. Um, because it is thicker, the water doesn't permeate it quite as easily. And so even when it's just hanging, there's never gonna be side channeling because the water wants to go all the way to the bottom because it's easier to just kind of stay in the middle than it is to pass through the sides and then, and then hit the seams. Um, everything always drips right out the bottom just because it sags. But it's a little bit cool because if you look at the diameter, it's actually smaller and thinner than the V60 ones. And so what that means is when you put your grinds in there, the same 20 grams of beans is actually gonna be in a smaller circle. So you're gonna actually have it in a denser formation. So when you pour your water in, because everything's getting pushed back in through the thick cloth, you're gonna have each droplet of water passing through more grinds, which leaves you with a thicker, heavier texture, but a faster extraction. So we're gonna talk about that and how it affects the, the pour time in a little bit. But yeah, so wanted to let everybody know that this is just easy to use, but you're gonna get a denser and heavier cup of coffee just because all the beans are, are condensed in the middle. So I'm just gonna quickly show everybody how to assemble it. It's pretty easy. There's actually just a little hole right over here. You slide it in, uh, pour it through, and boom. So that's what it looks like. As you guys can see, it kind of just funnels in more towards a very uh, finer little area, smaller little area at the bottom. So when, when we have 20 grams of beans, it's just gonna sit here a lot tighter. It's also because uh, there's nothing holding it up. There's no pure actual form for it. It's going to sag and sit in a very unique way. It's almost like a sock. So if you guys can imagine it, it almost like wraps around the grinds. And so, um, yeah, the water is going to pass through a lot more. It's going to be a lot more dense. And the extraction, if you guys think about it, it's going to be a little bit faster because more water passes through each particle. So the technique is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing a 1 to 11. Okay, so you guys know I like my 1 to 13s, but I still normally brew 1 to 15s. But on the Nell Drip, because the extraction rate is so high, we'll be doing a 1 to 11 and then a two-part bypass to take it to a 1 to 13. And so that's how we're going to do the, the Nell Drip. And I'm going to show you guys a technique. We're going to mostly start just by pouring in the middle. And yeah, just watch the demo. Hey guys, Eric back for another ad. As you can see, I'm still here at the, the Feibu shop, not at that amazing mansion that burned down and I can never go back. But you know, if you buy enough Kale's coffee using discount code CANDICE for 15% for off, maybe one day I can go back. So make sure to go to tailscoffee.com and we have a brand new coffee. This is the Midnight Madness, all right? It's from Mexico. It's really, really, really good. So similar to the siphon, um, I'm gonna, I always pre-rinse the filters. And this way you make sure all the pores are completely open. So this is just pre-rinsed. You can see from the wrinkles. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start by putting in all of our grinds. And then as always, you're gonna push it all the way to the bottom and then you're gonna give it a quick stir. The stirring, remember, is to just break up the clumps 
and to set the shape. Now, you always want to have a little div in the middle to catch the water. And this is the technique I've used for all my pourers. Now, when we pour, we're gonna pour only down the middle. And as you can see, I'm not using a scale because I've already pre-weighed all the water inside my kettle. So, if you look, we're pouring really slowly. All the water is still up there. We haven't even had a first drip yet and it just started coming out. So this technique always has a longer first drip. And as you can see, the color is starting to fill up the filters and we just slowly work our way in the middle. And now we move our way out. We always want to push all the darker grinds floating up down first. If you want to look, all the darker color of the coffee is coming out right now. It's beautiful. Now that all the darker grinds have floated up, we can start moving our way out. Now, if you want an even heavier texture, you can pour even slower and only down the middle. Pouring down the middle has no problems and you're gonna give it a quick stir and we're going to finish this coffee. Now this method has a very, very quick finish, which is fine. All the flavors are fully extracted. If you guys lift it up and see right now, this color is actually quite light. So we're actually gonna have a lot less flavors coming out now. And that's just from how light this thing is. So we're gonna give that a quick tap. You can see all the water is loosening up. A lot of murkiness here. A lot of oils are coming out now. And uh, we're gonna set this aside and take a look at it. So some of you might have noticed I didn't use a scale. Um, that's because I actually, earlier, if you missed it, I pre-weighed all the water. Um, didn't time it just because I know the timing is roughly gonna be under a minute and 20 anyways. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour the rest of the coffee into here. And that is because I talked about a bypass. Now, I did a one to 11, so that was 20 grams of beans to 220 grams of water. At a one to 11 ratio, it is very strong. Now, out of the 220 grams of water that came out, we have a 210 grams of coffee. So, this is quite a strong and high extraction. A lot of water in there. And uh, we're gonna zero that, and we're gonna add ourselves two parts, which is 40 grams of water. Okay, exactly 40 grams of water have been added. Similar to the siphon, we're going to have quite a bit of oils floating on the top. Um, the smell is just really rich. Uh, if you guys can notice earlier when I was brewing, a lot of the colors was just on the darker side and that's not because this is a dark roast. In fact, this is just a light to a medium roast that's why you can see in the crema, the color was actually quite light of a color. So if you guys want to go back, look at the crema. The crema actually tells you a lot of things. It is a lighter roast because it's a lighter color on top. But the coffee came out really dark because of how dense and how much water, or how many beans though each particle of water had to pass through. So you're gonna have high extraction, which is why we did the one to 11. So let's do a quick taste test. Yeah, so really just coats my mouth. The sweetness and the, the, the rounder texture is what we're looking for. We don't have a lot of complexity and that is because a lot more of the oils and a lot more of the richness is through. So instead, when we talk about the Nell Drip, I prefer to talk about it in terms of a feeling. Now, this feels like something had just sat in my mouth and it just coated it nicely. It's a chocolate coating, nothing nothing much more than that. It, it kind of reminds me of like a chocolate pudding. So this coffee feels like a chocolate pudding in my mouth and that is why the Nell Drip is so great and so tasty. But if you want more clarity, this is not the dripper for you. You would want to go back to a paper filter where you can get more, more clarity. But in terms of vibes and feelings, this one feels absolutely amazing for a pour over. So just before we close out the video, I wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an insight on the brewer and some things you should consider uh, other than the single pour technique. Now in the single pour, we pour straight down the middle, very slowly, very gently. And that is because I want to have a much richer and fuller kind of a flavor profile. 
Uh, with the nail drip though, you could actually do a pulse pour and that is because you can actually grind a little bit coarser and it's a lot more forgiving. Um, that's because the, each particle of water has to pass through a lot more beans naturally. So you're gonna have a higher agitation and a higher extraction rate. And so by using coarser grinds, you can actually um, get a lot more sweetness from it and a little bit more acidity just because you might be passing through a little bit faster and then passing through a little bit slower towards the end. Um, there's never a clogging issue on the nail drip, so you should never really think about that. That's why coarser grinds can actually work quite well. Uh, I still prefer the single pour technique just because I always think that the finer the grinds, the more even the extraction. And when I talk about coffee, I always talk about even extraction. So I like to pour slow and I like to pour evenly and that's how I like to do my coffee. So that's my technique and that's my thought after thoughts on it. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.